Today's video is all about the best and worst ways to make silver in Albion Online. What we're going to be covering today is gathering dungeons, mists, and more, so stay tuned for that. And the way this video is going to work is essentially I'm going to do an activity and tell you the best, most optimal, top, fastest way or most efficient way to do the activity and then show it to you and then show you the results on just a random Monday afternoon with premium active, by the way, without premium. Most of these are about 50% less effective, and that's fine. Also, just as a pretext, none of these work on the East server, and the reason why, the East server was completely destroyed by whales and bots and cheaters. So everything that I'm doing in this video will take you 10 times longer on the East server. Let's start with gathering. So let's start with gathering. Let's determine first the best resource we should go out and farm. And now I'm going to be farming, by the way, I forgot to mention, everything in this video will be safe zone content, except for corrupted dungeons and possibly the mists. But let's, uh, let's start with safe zone stuff. So gathering. What I want you to do, because I'm only going to be gathering in a blue zone, because it's more profitable to gather in a blue zone than a yellow zone, we're going to go down to resources and we're going to check the price of tier 2, 3, and 4 resources. So fiber is 21, 38, and 44. Uh, hide is 43, so it's double. So we all, that, already beats, that already beats fiber, 47 and 44. Next up is ore. So we're going to check ore is very low at 16, oh gosh. 35 and 32. Why does it go down at tier 4? Uh, next up is stone. Stone is generally the worst usually because travertine is worthless, but if you just do tier 2, 24. Now, I need to I need to type blocks. I need to see uh, like limestone blocks. I'll check that in a sec cuz this is a an exception since I live at Bridgewatch and Bridgewatch is known for refining stone. So I'll check that in a bit. 24 32. And then finally, wood. Wood is actually on the uptick for some reason. So wood is actually pretty high. 39, 47, damn, and 34. So wood and leather, or, or hide is the best. And the reason why hide is technically the best here is because the tier 4 animals have a chance to drop babies, which makes it even more profitable over wood. Also, because I live in Bridgewatch, wood is further away. But uh, I, I still need to check uh, limestone blocks, so I'm going to type lime stone block, and those are only 18, so that's down. Yeah, that's not worth doing right now. So we have determined the best resource based on the market prices is hide. So we're going to go gather some hide now. So next up, it's time to get your items ready to gather, and to do that, you want to get the best transport mount you can get. The Avalonian tool or tools if you're going to be gathering more than one thing. You need a faction flag up, of course. And also, make sure you bring journals and a pork pie. This is super important that you do all of these things so you can maximize your gathering potential. Now, if you have laborers on your islands, then you can earn even more from your journals. Otherwise, you can sell the journals and that will, you know, give you some extra cash, but not nearly as much uh, as, uh, also, it looks like Limhurst is attacking, so maybe I should do something about that. Eh, we're, we're filming a video. We'll let someone else handle it today. Step three is going to be gathering in a familiar zone or a high yield zone. So I am most familiar with Sand Gust Cleft. This is my favorite place to skin in the whole game. But sometimes it's a little busy. There's a lot of people there. Now, it is a Monday evening, so maybe it won't be too busy, but... Here at Steel Hide Meadow, you'll see this little icon where it says there is an unusual concentration of tier 4 hide-bearing animals. Unfortunately, that's worded wrong. It's actually a high concentration of all animals. So you definitely want to go there if all the other places that you are familiar with are busy. Or you can always learn a new place. Like, I would like to learn the Drywater Meadow map, though. Preferably, you want to be three zones away when Faction Flags, so you get that 15% boost in loot. Which really helps with the rare animal drops and... Tome gathering tome drops. So now what I'm going to do is I'm going to gather for 30 minutes and uh, record how much silver we make. And uh, yeah, I'm only going to be skinning. Now if I see enchanted, uh, you know, fiber or enchanted metal, I will pick that up, of course, because why wouldn't I? That's just free money laying on the ground. Also, I'm going to grab this hidden treasure. It won't really count towards our total. That's just some free money there. It's just on the ground. Anyway, I'm going to eat a pork pie, start the timer, and then speed up the footage. 
so that you can see it's uncut. I've made like this video 20 times, but I'm making more. I'm, I'm, I'm going to show you all the silver methods all in one video because you guys deserve it. Let's go. And we're eating the pie. So gathering is one of the easiest, most laid back, and simplest things you can possibly do in the game. So the sooner that you level up to tier 8 gathering, get your gathering set, get your avatools, the more silver you will be able to make. This is the most leisurely activity in the entire game. You can sit back, binge watch shows, anime, play other like games if you want while you do this. There is so much you can do. Watch YouTube, watch you know streams if you want. It does not matter. There is nothing, nothing beats this as far as difficulty for getting silver in Alvin Online. If you want the easiest possible activity for silver, this is it right here. You just run around and gather everything that's not bolted to the ground. It's that simple. It's that easy. It's completely risk-free. There is no danger whatsoever doing this. It's the best. All right, it is about 30 minutes now. Time to head back, and let's see how much we earned. Now, I will say that the first map I was on, terrible because there were so many people skinning. Absolutely, the whole map was covered in skinners, so it was, it was not good silver per hour at all. So I went to the second map, and it's also pretty busy, but it's still a lot better than that first map, but I only got there in the last, like, 10 minutes. So I'm going to calculate all of the stuff we got. Here's, here's a... Here's what we have so far. We didn't. I didn't even fill all my journals. I only filled 36 of them. So we're going to calculate all that. And uh, yeah. Uh, two baby drops, which is pretty good. That's pretty average, honestly. And uh, I'll, I'll get the totals here. So this is the raw loot value. We had two baby drops. That's worth 139k. No tome drops. Only 36 journals filled. The journals, if sold, are worth 45k. But we can get more out of that. So right now we're sitting at uh, over 1 mil per hour, which again, not the greatest. This is actually a really terrible run. But um, if we turn these journals into uh, Rugged Hide here, that will give me 57 Rugged Hide. Which um, if we take our actual Rugged Hide here and split it by 57. And then compare it to splitting a journal by 1. So here we go. So the journal is worth 1,265. But the 57 Rugged Hide is worth 2,758. Now, after journal conversions, as in we give the journals to the laborers, and then 22 hours later, they give us the raw hide, we're at 590,000 silver. And we technically also get the journals back, but I don't count that towards the value because I just put the empty, I don't sell the empty journals, I just put them in a chest. And uh, let me hide the text here and the timer. So. I just put them in a chest and then, yeah, you can see I've got lots of filled journals in here. Now, unfortunately, this is not something I can refine because I would have to travel all the way to Martlock and I would rather wait for a refining day. But I could save my tier 2 for a refining day if I wanted. You can see here Rugged Hide is worth 41, whereas tier 2 Leather is only worth 31. And if I refine it here in Bridgewatch, I will be refining at a loss. So I definitely don't want to be refining these at all. This is our final total here, 590,000. If we had a tome drop, that'd be another 100k. If we had a, another baby drop, which I normally get in 30 minutes, that's another 60k. And uh, again, if I was in a less crowded zone or a more efficient zone, I could earn even more than this. But this is pretty low for what I normally get, just letting you know. Also, finally, I did not get any 4.3 drops at all. I didn't see a single one in the zone that wasn't already being camped by a radar hacker. So that tends to happen, especially lately. Radar hacking is massively on the rise, and those guys, well, they can see the 4.3 nodes from outside of render distance, and right now there's no way to compete. I haven't gotten a 4.3 node in quite a long time, but yeah, we, we made a little bit of silver there. So the next up is, I noticed something interesting while gathering, and this is something that I normally combine with gathering, and that is group dungeons. I solo, I'll, I'll go to a group dungeon by myself and solo it, and I just so happen to find a, um, a legendary group dungeon, which does not normally happen. So I'm going to go attempt that. And I say the word attempt because I don't know if I can technically do it or not. So I'm going to strip my character down here and then swap to, uh, let's see, a you know dungeon clearing set here. And uh, let's see, switch to that mount. And I'm definitely going to need roast. And we definitely want to have armor that can kill things. 
Also, I'm going to go ahead and take this Druidic Staff with a... Um, yeah, Druidic Staff with Torch Swap and Mercenary Jacket. Just in case, because it is a very dangerous dungeon. And so that'll be the next topic. So this is a Tier 4 group dungeon. The Golden Butterflies signify that it is a Legendary dungeon. Which, if you see a 4.3, which is the Purple Butterflies dungeon, those are absolutely worth doing. And, uh... I'm going to check and make sure it's not already cleared real quick before I uh, start the, the recording. Yeah, it, there's there's enemies here. So I'm going to eat the food and we're going to start the timer. Oh yeah. So farming group dungeons does require at least an 8.3 set. I recommend 8.4 for the higher difficulties. This one was a little bit harder because it's a 4.4 or a, a, a tier 4 legendary. Now... I recommend that if you see purple butterflies in a group dungeon that you stop whatever it is you're doing, swap to your solo group dungeon set, and then go clear it. Now that's been a members only secret forever. There's a reason why tier 4.3 group dungeon maps are almost non-existent in the marketplace, and even then they're, 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 they sometimes pay out, right? They're worth about four to 500k each. Whereas, um, whenever you go to a 4-3, you know, group dungeon and you solo it, you can usually make a million. Now, I did make a million in this one, and this one was a crappier dungeon. This one only had, like, two floors, it had maybe two chest bosses, the rest were tome chests. So, it, w it was actually a really bad dungeon, but it paid out its usual amount in silver, and it only took me 20 minutes to clear, so not too bad. Oh boy, so that only took 20 minutes, and uh, we made quite a lot of silver. A little bit more than we normally would, I'm going to tell you that right now. And I don't have inventory space to pick up all this stuff, so I'm having to throw things out and swap things that are, you know, worth more, more value at least. So, uh, let's see, bag definitely. Okay, silver bags, we, can we not pick up the silver bags? What is something I can throw out here? I think this, uh, this, this is fine. And I'm trying to get a full value before I start consuming everything. How much is that worth? 24k. Alright. So give me a bit, guys, to uh, sort this all out. Uh, Lat 4 boots, not really worth it. 4k there. Definitely pick those up. 400. Ew, gross. 4k. 400. Pick those up. Pick those up. And uh, the 5-1 armor, definitely worth grabbing there. Throw out that. There we go. Pick that up. And, uh, yeah, it's a pretty good haul. There's only 49k left in this, uh, this little chest here. So, what's that? That's 1,700. This is 12,000. So, let's, uh, throw those out. Swap it for that. Okay, down to 36,000. We'll just have to kind of leave the rest there. Uh, it sucks, but that's just how it is. And, uh, again, that was only 20 minutes. Now, you... I do... I am using a satchel, and I am using auto respect, so I technically lost silver doing this. But I would rather have the fame. And boy oh boy is that a lot of fame credits. So, what I'm gonna do now is I'm gonna teleport to town. I didn't get downed at all, so there was no repairs really, I'll still- I'll show you that right now. I'm gonna put my extra gear away, and we will see how much we actually earned from doing this, uh, legendary tier 4 blue zone dungeon, by the way. Also note that I earned a crap ton of faction points also doing this. I don't know how much exactly. Well, I was at 18k before filming. I did the gathering and now I'm at 27k. So I definitely earned 9,000 in between the two activities. But look, repairs 6,780. That's nothing. That is absolutely nothing, man. And uh, let's go ahead and uh, put my gear up. And cause it was over, like one of the chests was estimated value 900,000. So let's see. Uh, put the torch in there. Druidic, and that goes there. So I'm at 1.15 million estimated market value. Uh, just from loot, from one dungeon, alright? That's pretty damn good. If I eat the silver bags, I'm at 911,000. So yeah, we made a million silver in 20 minutes. Now, this doesn't always happen. Also, legendary tier 4 dungeons are incredibly hard to find. I will mention, since you're this far in the video, that uh, members only have been told about this for quite some time. A 4.3 or higher dungeon is usually pretty damn good silver per hour, like at least a couple million silver per hour if you find one. So I'm going to go vendor all this now, and uh, we'll go to the next silver making activity. Now, I want to mention when doing dungeons, you can always bring mercenary laborer journals with you, and this will increase your silver gain. Not by selling the journals. Do not use mercenary journals if you don't have the laborers. But I do have the laborers, 
and this would dramatically increase my silver per hour by filling these journals, but I'm kind of lazy these days and I don't really need the money, so I'm not going to do it for the sake of the video, but you can do it to increase your earnings. Next up will be solo dungeons. Now, solo dungeons are terrible. They are never worth doing, and I'm going to do them for 30 minutes just to show you why. They're no good for fame farming. This one's actually enchanted uh, with blue butterflies, so it's going to be a little bit better than the normal ones, but I am using an 8.4 speed clearing set, and even with this, it's just not worth the trouble. So I'm going to do 30 minutes of solo dungeons, and uh, I'll show you the loot. I'll let you know if I also get lucky or what I generally normally get. So we're going to eat the food and begin the timer. Solo dungeons back in early 2020, 2019 were the best way to make silver in the entire game. And because uh, fame was way different, open world mobs didn't give that much. There wasn't mists or, or avalonians or anything else to do for fame. And you couldn't solo statics. You could only solo group dungeons with a dagger back then. This was also the best fame farm in the game. So not only was it the best silver and fame farm in the game, it's been heavily nerfed since then. Instead of making 2 to 3 million per hour running these, you only make about... 400,000 to 600,000 per hour depending on if you have premium or not and uh, it also takes longer to find the dungeons now because the mists take up a spot the corrupted dungeons take up a spot right now the halloween dungeons are taking up a spot on the open world also i did do an open world chest because i'm an 8-4 why the hell wouldn't i everyone that wears 8-4 will absolutely go for those chests it was only like I think 100k, so it is like a very good fraction of my earnings in these solo dungeons. So yeah, it's uh, it's not worth the fame either, it's not worth the faction points. There we are, that is about 30 minutes now. I will mention that I did do an open world chest because when you're stacked in 8.4 gear in a yellow zone, that's what you do, you go get the yellow zone chests. So we're gonna teleport home now, and I don't have any extra weird stuff in my inventory. But you can see our estimated market value is only 300,000, and that includes the open world chest, which was about 100k. Uh, again, I, like out of multiple testing, and this is with premium, doing solo dungeons in tier 5 yellow zones, has only barely earned around 400k per hour. It's absolutely terrible for fame, it's terrible for silver, and as far as jackpots go, we have this tier 5 bag. And a tier 5 bag again. The attached of insight and then a regular bag. These, like, so there was no real big jackpots. There was no capes. There was no, like, tier 6 or 7 items. So you can see, pretty crummy, pretty crappy. I don't recommend solo dungeons. Now we will be doing yellow zone mists. And we're only clearing the big camps. We're not clearing the little camps unless they're on the way. So let's eat our, uh, what is this, meat stew here, and then we will begin the timer. So not a lot of people know about this farm. This is just farming the big camps from Yellow Zone Mists, which, um, for those that don't know, instead of riding out of the mist, you can simply log out. It takes 10 seconds to log out. When you log back in, it will kick you from the mist, allowing you to quickly and easily, uh, you know, go to other mists. As well, when you're in the open world and you find a mist, most likely mist portals will respawn within 5 to 15 minutes in that same spot. So if you have a nice little rotation, a nice little pile of mists, uh, you can just go in and out of them. Now, I, I do go in and out of a lot of these. If they don't have a big camp, I do not bother doing them. You can farm the small camps, and I have gotten jackpots from the small camps, but it's not as likely. Your silver per hour will increase if you only farm big camps, which is what I'm doing here. This has been a members only secret for, for years, but I, you know, if you made it this far in the video, congrats, now you know the secret as well. It's decent silver per hour, the fame isn't terrible, it's also fun if you PvP a bunch. Alright, well this is technically 30 minutes worth, this is a legendary mist and I'm not gonna let it go, so I'm gonna farm the rest of this little area. Uh, because I never find these in yellow zones ever, and I pretty much outmatch everyone in this. I can PvP just about every melee build, most caster builds, hell, the, the, the frost staff we saw earlier, I could take them all out. So I'm gonna rescue this epic wisp in this legendary mist, and it should give me some good rep. Because uh, I could I could use the rep actually, but uh, I'll go over the earnings in just a bit, but I am excited to be into this legendary. Yeah, I'm, I'm almost past favored, so... And uh, yeah, the Witch Work Staff is amazingly good. The reason I brought it is exactly for what you just saw. Um, <laughs> when taking those chests, I can just group everyone up that's around it an objective and just take them out. Also, the fame is pretty good um, whenever you find enchanted mobs. So I'm going to farm this area for just a little while. 
but I still want to get these these two camps. I want to get every camp in the legendaries because they can drop really, really good loot. And let's just kill these dudes real quick. 10,000 fame on the regular mob there. Uh, that's just crazy. Now, this is a little baby mob, so they don't get that much. Only 3,800. But, like, if we find an enchanted mob, it's like 20, 25k or something. Uh, 5k rep, 59k fame. Again, not that great because, again, yellow zone. But, uh, yeah, let's... Uh, <laughs> Let's farm these camps here, and uh, then we'll call it. I know it's going to go over 30 minutes, but hey, it's a legendary mist. We're going to do it. And like I said, I never find these. So, uh, you know, just run in, pop, pop the enemies. And, you know, it, it's been pretty busy in the mists today. I don't know what's going on. Normally, they're pretty dead, but there's a lot of people in them. So I don't know if, like, the new patch, because today was patch day. I don't know if that, like, brought people back into the game or something or, or what's happening. But, uh, okay, that's more than enough. So we can get on the damn mount and grab the loot. There it is. Just a just a blue, small, probably nothing in it. A little bit. Not too much. Nothing crazy. But this, this big camp here, definitely want to grab that. And um, I will be knocking people out. I, I've been avoiding PvP for the entirety of the 30 minutes because most people aren't going to PvP. But because it's a legendary mist and there could be boss monsters and other objectives, I want to knock out as many people as I can so that I can have them to myself. And this build is just great at- oh, you know, there's someone nearby, but I don't see them. Are they invis? I'm gonna hop on my mount and scout further. Okay, it's just a little bow shitter, so I can take that guy out immediately. Uh, he's not a prob. He's gonna mount up, that's fine. And, uh, laser him. Can I, uh... Can I hit the teleport? Probably not. He's dodging a lot of my attacks. Yeah. You guys need to back off. This is my zone now. Uh, I'm going to walk around unmounted for a bit. These guys might get scared, walk away. I haven't inspected everybody. That's a healer above me. He's undergeared. I'm not afraid. Let's just start clearing all the mobs here. And again, this guy in my southwest thinks he can, he can take me out here. But uh, again, just kill all the mobs. None of these guys can really take me out, so I'm not worried. Uh, none of them have any kind of one-shot potential. If they gang up on me, I can get away. It's not a big deal. This uh, this build's very, very powerful in PvP. People don't realize that Arcane Staff, once you've got spec into it, man, it, it's dangerous. It is it is brutal. It is absolutely brutal. And I would like to use my black hole here to gather these mobs up, but I don't need to because we got the objective completed. 67,000 fame for just doing the objective. What about the chest loot? Is it any good? It'd be funny if it was a legendary chest. It's not. It's um. It's just a blue. But hey, you know, that's still pretty good. 122,000. And that calls it, so I'm gonna go ahead and get back to town. But I'm gonna- I really wanna bully these dudes. Also, I kinda wanna stick around- it's a legendary mist, so I definitely wanna stick around. I won't be able to catch this guy. Like, my- my build is not a catch build. These freaking guys in oxes, bro. Stop bringing oxes to the mist, dog. Like, what are you doing? I'm not getting him, but it was worth a shot. <laughs> uh, I could have lasered him to slow him down, but like, see, the, this is an enchanted mob, right? Just interrupt his spell, hit him with some more beams, chop him up. 30,000 fame right there. That's really, really good. So if I can also find, like, an enchanted, uh, I don't know. I don't know, not, not just enchanted mobs, but like, the special fey, the special monsters of the mists. Again, they're, they're just really good, you know, to, to farm. Also, they higher chance to drop the Tomes of Insight in this area, by the way. Anyway, uh, I'm going to go ahead and show you my loot here. 662,000 in 30 minutes. A little bit over 30 minutes, whatever. It's not too bad. I've had better. I've had worse. It, it's it's still better than solo dungeons, okay? Um, and I'm going to I'm gonna farm this zone uh, for the remainder of the time here. And then I'll meet you back in town. And see, this is what I'm talking about. This is why I didn't leave. Because... Hell, I found one. <laughs> I never find these. Ever, 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 ever. Let's see. I can't really interrupt the spell casting. But yeah, we took him down pretty easy. And that's uh, that's another 579,000 right there. Super easy loot. Super easy money. That they're, they're almost always in legendaries. That's why I always run around and look for them. Alright, so after farming that legendary mist, I got a ton more Tomes of Insight. Uh, because all the enchanted mobs really love dropping those things. So we're up to 1.3 million. It's a little, you know, a little bit over 30 minutes, but it's close enough. All right, now, like I said, normally I don't get the legendary dungeons, but even without the legendary, it's still 660k in 30 minutes. That's over 1 million per hour in the yellow zone. Completely safe, completely risk-free, by the way. 
Oh, and if you wanted to know how many tomes I got from doing the mists, uh, here we go, 29 tier 4s and 8 tier 3s. I only did the big camps unless the little camp was along the way, so not the greatest for fame tomes. Here is what we've covered so far in the game. We have uh, gathering, solo and group dungeons, and large mist camps in the yellow zone, in the blue zone, completely safe with zero risk, is all making us over 1 million silver per hour. Whereas bad activities so far covered are solo dungeons. The, this did not make us 1 million silver per hour. This also did not make us any good fame. So avoid solo dungeons. Next up is Corrupted Dungeons. And we will not be PvPing. We will only be ratting. Because if you try to PvP in Corrupted Dungeons these days, you will fight 0.4 Awakened players. You won't stand a chance against them. There is zero reason to do it unless you yourself want to run a 4.4 Awakened item with health, cooldown, and lifesteal, otherwise you will die. So I'm going to be starting the timer here as soon as I eat the food, and we shall begin 30 minutes of... This is Stalker! This is full loot! This is Risk! Stalker Corrupted Dungeons. Let's go. Corrupted Dungeons used to be amazing back in the day. There was a guy that farmed a whole year's worth of premium in silver in under 24 hours doing just Stalker Corrupted Dungeons. And uh, nowadays, with, especially with the latest patch, uh, corrupted dungeons are horrible to do. You cannot PvP in these anymore because every single opponent you fight will be a 4.4 Sweat Lord who has awakened their weapon to give them like 800 bonus health and cooldown reduction and life steal, and you're not going to ever win against that. And if you think you're going to win against that, they will simply run away. Also, I made an error there and got downed, so I will compensate by adding one minute to our timer, which is fine. It's basically six minute dungeon clears, which means we can clear four to five and 30 minutes. And uh, again, this used to be good silver per hour, and it's it's not. Rarely, it's okay silver per hour if you play it on the Corrupted Dungeon bonus day, but uh, today is a faction fight bonus day, so that's not the case. Alright, so it took a little bit more than 30 minutes for the final dungeon. That's because I got downed earlier, but you can see that even with risking about 60,000 in loot in a Stalker Corrupted Dungeon, uh, we only... 395k... In, uh, in 30 minutes, so, you know, it's it's not a lot, it's like 800k per hour. It, again, this is this is red zone stuff, this is black zone stuff. I don't see the point, I don't see why anyone would, would bother doing this. It's it's just not worth doing, man. And then I got to teleport back, only 11k, because I'm right outside Carleone. There's no ganker, so I could ride back, but 400k, risking 60k, 30 minutes, ew, gross. Oh, and the repairs were only 5k because all my gear is super cheap, so, you know, there is no real repair cost when doing Stalker Corrupteds. Next up is doing the mists again, but this time we are in the black zone. That's right, but we have a little budget set. This set is only worth 36,000, so it's not a big deal if we die. And we're going to be clearing camps. Uh, let's go ahead and start the timer. <laughs> I, don't, I don't expect to live very long on this one. So, I actually end up doing some Nightfall Abbey, but I get chased around by really geared players. Again, I keep encountering super geared players in the mists. Now, I'm just a little 4-1 shitter in crappy gear, so it's totally fine. But, um, yeah. Uh, what ends up happening is, of course, a double-bladed jumps me and I die. I lose about 200k in loot that I had gotten. But, uh, also, I, I was roaming red zone, which is not nearly as efficient as roaming black zone for mists. So, this could be improved upon a bit. Uh, also, if I had spec and ursine maulers, which I have like 20 specializations, so I'm not dealing nearly as much damage. I didn't get any good chests from the Nightfall Abbey anyway, so it was kind of a waste. And you could argue that if I didn't have auto respec on and stuff, that the silver that I picked up from these mobs paid for my set. But it's still not an efficient fame farm, it's not an efficient silver farm. At this point, I essentially just farmed 200,000 silver for some other guy, which does not feel good, it's not fun, and again, 200k silver to me is nothing. I'm a multi-billionaire, I don't really care. But uh, I'm just trying to show you that it is not worth your time to do this activity, even if you wouldn't Gucci gear, it would not change a thing. And there you have it. Now, I only had 189,000 with a risk of 36,000, in nearly 30 minutes. Now that's red zone roaming for mists and that in Fall Abbey. I would say that I picked up enough silver to make up for my original set's losses. But, you know, losing 180k, we did get 19k from silver bags and some... Uh, what are, whatever these are. Oh, some of these were left over from the Corrupted Dungeons. So, ignore these tier 1s, but the tier 2 and tier 4... Tier 3 and tier 4 ones we did have. 
And yeah, it, it's not a build that can really survive. Also, I put myself in combat. It's whatever. I couldn't really escape this anyway. There's just way too high of a, a gear score differential. Now, what I was hoping I could possibly do is wound him a bit and then someone else comes up and kills both of us. That's why I fought back. But uh, essentially, he, he got like a couple hundred K out of the kill. It's not a big deal. But uh, at the end of the day, you know... If I had cleared that camp, maybe at best we would have earned 100k, putting us at around 300k per per 30 minutes or 600k per hour. Again, I don't like black zone mists. I don't think they're that profitable because they take way longer to clear. And you could say, well, what if I brought a better set? Well, I would just get killed by the 8-4s. The 8-4s tend to ignore me because they see me as a rat or they try to kill me because they see me as a rat. Whereas, yeah, in that particular fight, if I was better geared, that guy, I couldn't kill him because he, he could run away. He would be able to escape if I tried to kill him. But it wouldn't really increase the silver per hour all that much to be worth bothering to do. So that's Black Zone Mists for you. And now we'll be doing Black Zone solo dungeons. Uh, these are tier 8 dungeon maps. Let's go to Sandrift Step. I'm using a tier 7 set. This whole set is worth about 344,000. And, uh, yeah, it's not entirely safe, but this is my favorite set to use if people decide to invade my dungeon and suddenly attack while their skills are on cooldown, because I can basically just delete their whole health bar, no matter what set they're wearing, unless it's like 8-3 or 8-4, in which case I just run away, but, um, I usually just blindly fire into them, and I'll usually make a million per invader. So, this is why I'm literally going to a dungeon right outside Bridgewatch, Part of this is because I want them to invade me, and, um, well, I, this shows up on radar hacks, and so do I, and they see my name and like, oh, we can kill Soul Bench, he's, he's loaded. Alright, so we're gonna start the timer here, and, uh... So the thing with solo dungeons is you have to wait 90 seconds before you can start doing them, otherwise people come in and kill you. And uh, part of my build, part of my setup is hoping that people come in and don't realize they have a shield. A lot of them don't. They'll just start auto-attacking me, thinking I'm AFK. They get, like, really thirsty. Or they click on me to inspect me, auto-attacking me, which lowers their shield. They still have cooldowns, so I just burst them down with the bolt casters, 100 to 0. Uh, and they can't use their defenses because they're, it's a long cooldown. So that's why I'm using this build in solo dungeons, specifically to kill players uh, than invade. But uh, no one invaded this time, and it's still a really fast dungeon clearing build. Boatcasters have always been fast at dungeons. Now, tier 8 dungeons not the best. However, there there is the opportunity for jackpot for the big jackpots, because you can get the tier 8 drops, meaning you could technically get an 8.4 drop in these dungeons. But you almost never will. <laughs> and they take forever to clear, and the enemies are tough, and it's just a pain in the butt, and the rewards really suck, so I don't recommend dungeons at all. Well, that was two dungeons, which took 25 minutes, and here are the earnings. Let me dig them out of the chest here that we got. Uh, these are tier 8 maps, by the way. So all in all, in 25 minutes, you could round it up to 30. We made 390k, so about, it's still around 800k an hour. And again, this is with a tier 7 set with maximum specs. Like, my, bolt, my crossbows, my bolt casters, it's all 100 down here. So I am way over geared for these flat tier 8 maps, and it, again, it's only like 800k an hour, it's, it's doo-doo, it's gross, and I would like to say that, um, you know, I got uh, several jackpots here, I got, uh, every time you get a bag or a cape, that's basically a little jackpot when you do these dungeons. So, again, like, it could be way worse, like, you take the two bags, like, that bag's 44k, this one's 70k, you know, that's, uh... <laughs> That brings it up to like only 300k per 30 minutes or 600k an hour. Yeah, it's better. Sure, you could say it's better than, uh, you know, yellow zone dungeons. Solo dungeons suck. Even mapped solo dungeons suck. Even in the black zone, they suck. They are, they're just not worth using. They're not worth doing. And uh, I, I cannot recommend them at all. By the way, if you made it this far, never, ever, ever use the quick sell button. Let me show you why. And um, scrolling through, this is the price on the left that you're going to be getting for your items. And the one on the right is the market average, you can ignore that, but look on the left here, I want to show you just some terrible, terrible deals. 115 silver for this Limhurst cape. Um, no. 162 for this bag? No. 225 silver for this tier 6 bag? I don't think so, Buster. Only 1,000 for the horse? Who the hell is gonna... Like, look, if I go to the bag, I can quick sell it for 41k, Right? Or I can just regular sell it to a to a buy order for 41k. If I go to uh, what else was it? 
Uh, the horse? Only a thousand? No, you mean seven thousand? Never, ever, 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 ever use quick sell. Never, ever. All right, that's all I've got for you today. Whenever people tell you that you should go to the black zone to earn silver, they're fooling you. And you can even, you can go further. You can try gathering in the black zone. You're not going to make nearly as much. You can try, you know, even going in Gucci or sets by yourself. Here's the thing, right? Black zone and red zone are not meant for solo players. If you have a bunch of friends, absolutely go out into the black zone. Go out into the red zone. Go gather with your friends. Go kill stuff with your friends. Go do group stuff. That's totally fine. And yes, as a group, you will earn more than as a solo player. But for us solo players that refuse to join guilds and be a slave and be miserable and have to set alarm clocks for call to arms and crap like that and deal with 50 people hooting and hollering in our ear on a Discord call. For those of us that just want to just log in whenever the frick we want and farm and make some silver, the blue and the yellow zone is far superior as you can see from this very video. And no, I'm not cherry picking, oh good blue and yellow zone, no. I just logged in for the day and showed you what I earned and this is consistent. This is consistent, and when it wasn't, I let you know in those parts of the video. With that said, a lot of people are going to downvote this because they are zealots, and they are religiously fanatical towards the black zone, so please leave a like on the video, and also leave a comment because I don't have a social life, I don't really talk to people or anything, and so uh, with that said, you know, your comments are the only thing, the only human interaction I get anymore in the real world. Finally, on the right side of your screen, there's a video you should click, please click it. If you don't click it, then you're going to uh, get crashed out if you go to the black zone and people are going to kill you while you're frantically trying to log back in.